what I hope I'm doing, some days I don't know. <laughs> But what I hope I'm doing in the classroom is getting people to think, right, about how the text may or may not be relevant, right, uh, to their lives and how we need to rethink um, some of the things we just regurgitate, right, and, uh, uh, and end up oppressing other people with and even ourselves, right. Uh, not permitting ourselves to struggle with text and with God and, and hopefully helping the students also to recognize that there is a distinction between uh, the biblical text, it is a human text, a very human text, no matter how sacred you regard it, right, and struggling with the fact that there's a difference between that text you, and, and the many interpretations and the God you say you serve, they're not the same. Right? And we need to be distinguishing the two and, and, and figuring out what it, what it is uh, that is still empowering in the context in which we find ourselves, right? Uh, instead of assuming somebody else's context who may not be dealing with the same issues that you're dealing with. But how can the text speak to us and those we minister to, right? And also being aware of our own privilege. Everybody has some privilege, right? What, what is it? Um, uh, what is the privilege in which I stand, right? As much as I remember being poor, and as much as I still may be poor in some regards, right, that, that, that many people don't have a degree from an Ivy League school. Many don't have uh, degrees, period, right? And that gives me a certain a privilege, right? Uh, and even to stand in front of them in a the, in the position I do gives me a certain privilege. I think about the women in my class, right? who struggle in churches uh, who, uh, to, to find their voices and even to use their voices, right? And, but, but being in the academy, I may have a similar struggle, but not the same struggle, right? So in a sense, I have a privilege. Uh, I can make certain decisions, right, as a, a teacher and a minister that don't impact me the same way that it does the woman who's sitting under a certain pastor in a church. Uh, teaching is one of my vocations, right? Um, and I think they overlap, right? When I first entered the classroom, I think I resisted being pastoral in the classroom, uh, but I had to learn that I could not separate those hats. I may not be in a church, but I still have a role and a necessity and a responsibility to be pastoral towards my students. Uh, you know, we want to say, well, they're grown, and so I shouldn't have to do this, that, and the other, but they're human beings too, right? And they're trying to navigate this part of their lives, and, uh, and I need to stop. And, and they're going through a lot of different things, right? I've had, I've had many students uh, teaching in the Detroit area who's who have lost children, right, uh, uh, who've been murdered on the streets. Right? Uh, and some of them actually come to seminary trying to, as if this is, um, uh, as, the, as if they see the classroom as a, as a therapist's couch sofa, right? And they're working through these issues. And I have students every year uh, uh, without fail, who, uh, who, who write on a paper, uh, uh, when they do uh, exegesis paper for me, they do it in parts, and the first part is to tell me about yourself and how that may impact how you read scripture, something, you know, we can't write it all, but something about yourself. And I always have a student who, who shares how they've been raped or molested as a child, right? And so, you know, they, they, they bring all of this baggage, and then there are students who are int intimidated by the professor for different reasons, and they're trying to negotiate that. And so I have to be pastoral, I have to be compassionate, I have to, I can't just stand there as if this, as this disconnected teacher. And so that is, yes, teaching is my vocation, but it's also uh, a place where I also act as a pastor. Is teaching a part, I, I say, I'd say yes in the sense that um, uh, as a part of my vocation, which is very much in tied up in, in, in terms of who I am, right? I teach with all I am, right? 
everything that uh, uh, that I am, I bring to the task of teaching. Yes, it is a part of my identity, and it informs my identity. I am shaped. I am shaped in the classroom. Uh, I am shaped by the car. I am shaped by living out the car. Right. How do I know when I something? A lot of times you just don't. <laughs> just hoping, right? But I think sometimes you feel that you got it right when students tell you that you've impacted their lives in real ways, right? I have this, for the first time I have a student, I teach in the Detroit metro area. We have centers in Columbus, Cleveland, and Ashland, Ohio. I have a female student who comes every week. This is not a weekend class, every week to my, to my engaging text and context class. She's, she's driving from Cleveland, Tennessee, from Cleveland, Ohio, right, to my class every week. Uh, and she's just saying, you know, the professors down there are wonderful, but you have really, you just don't know, you have changed my life. Uh, you've helped me to find my voice, she said to me. And she said this in tears, and she says, you know, I talk about this class all the time, and guess what, there's a student coming up next week, and he's going to drive every week. And he doesn't have anybody. She had relatives up here. He doesn't have anybody to stay. So you feel like that some that, that when people can tell you that uh, that and you can see it. She shared. She didn't say much in class, but when she, uh, she recently shared, I was just amazed that the way she was reading a text differently based on a, the the situation that she was in. Right, uh, uh, recently with a, a, a sick relative. Um, so when you see it, you hear it, and, and, and students share it, you feel like, okay, um, uh, what I'm doing is, 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 is effective in some way, right, and transformative in some way. Because there are many days where you ask yourself, what am I doing here? <laughs> Why am I still here? Right? Uh, I, I think we have to take a lot of responsibility in the classroom. You know, if, if 10 students uh, don't get an assignment right, and it's 12, there's something I did <laughs> wrong, right? And I have learned over the years with every assignment, I don't care how simple, I have to give an example. And early on, I used to give students examples of parts of exegesis papers. I would quickly pull something together and give to them, right? And I had students say, well, Dr. Smith, um, you just want us to be like you, and you know, and we're students, and so eventually I just start uh, uh, giving them examples of student papers that, that have done well. See, you can do this too. Right? They, they started where you are with almost nothing, and this is what they have come to. It's a journey, but you can get there too. Am I always a teacher? I think, and as much as it is a part of my identity, yes, but I think that I have to be cognizant of the fact that uh, there are lines of authority, right? That when I'm not in the classroom, you know, that, um, uh, uh, well, well, let me say this. Even in the classroom, I have learned that um, over the years that there, there is a dialogue that should take place, right? Uh, early on, we're taught to teach uh, in, in ways that we're just lecturing, right? And so teaching, just like learning, is more about dialogue, helping students engage in dialogue, me engaging in dialogue with them. So I think in terms of the way my teaching has developed, yes, I'm always teaching and I'm always learning. So, uh, yes, but there's always that, what does that mean, right? And so being a teacher always doesn't mean I'm always uh, expecting you to be some passive learner at my feet, right? Know that I'm engaging in dialogue with you and uh, hoping that we can learn something from each other, right? I think that's what teaching is all about. It's not about, you know, expecting you to, you know, I have something special, expecting you always to receive something from me, right? But a give and take, right? But still it's tricky with, with family members still, right? majority still teachers are taught to be uh, uh, to teach students to be passive learners right and I think if we if we can all learn to engage at a different level in a different way in a dialogical way right and that we're always giving and taking definitely you know they, they, uh, uh, there, there's a role of teachers and teachers 
uh, all kinds of people are teachers, not just those who go to school. You know, we're always teaching and learning from each other, right? Parents are our first teachers, right? Uh, depending on how you think about rewarding, right? <laughs> there, there, there's the monetary and then there's the other, right? Uh, uh, in this profession, in, in seminaries, uh, I, you definitely don't do it for a monetary reward, right? Especially in this climate where, where everybody's taking pay cuts and so forth, right? Uh, but um, it, it, it is rewarding, like I said, when you see the light bulb go off, right? Or when I see my own progress as a teacher, right? And I think back, I'm like, students who had me when I first started, you know, I was a terror, right? <laughs> and still, even some students uh, characterize it as Dr. Smith has mellowed out over the years. Uh, but I've learned to be a better teacher, right? So that's rewarding, just to grow the, the, the growth that I experience on its own, right? And then the growth that you see in students and to see students uh, who um, who just thought they couldn't do certain things, right, to accomplish, that's, that's rewarding, right? 